Ladies and gentlemen, it's Silent Mike. Welcome back to another Fix Your Form, where I take your form, make it a little bit better, try to coach you guys through. My man with the first conventional pulls of the day, what we got to do is figure out some tightness. We got to get the slack out of those arms and slack out of your system, meaning we need tension in your back through your arms into the barbell before we start to pull. That's why your back's rounding a little bit. So first off, let's move that stance in a little bit. Before pulling on the bar, what we want is heavy hands. We want a lot of weight in the hands. If you're lifting 135 pounds, I want about 50 of those pounds already in your hands before you step on the gas and begin to pull. Number two, what we really need to focus on is breathing and bracing in our stomach. You want to breathe into your front of your stomach, sides and low back, and really flex those. Then once you get the tension in your hands, begin to pull. So move that stance in, get heavier hands, pull the slack out, get some tension in your system, and then hit the gas. Moving on to some sumo pulls, ladies and gentlemen. Where are you guys all training? Maybe, maybe Europe? I feel like all these bars and gyms just look slightly different. Man, these actually look pretty dang good for some sumo pulls. So stereotypically, or, or, or most what we want for the majority of people is we want a totally vertical shin on the sumo deadlift. And that's not everybody, but I'd say for 90 plus percent. But for you, your knees are traveling just a little bit forward, but they're not messing up your bar path at all because you have a little bit shorter of a torso and your arms seem a little bit longer. One thing I'd suggest or at least try to do um, is I'd try to sit back or fall back even more. I've talked about in the past maybe a teeter-totter system where you're leaning backwards. And then two is maybe uh, move that head up just a bit, just a hair, maybe uh, right on the horizon. You're looking probably three feet in front of your feet. Try maybe five, ten, or even just straight ahead. Um, but overall, I must say that's a very, very clean sumo pull. Um, right around your knees, it gets a little bit funky because of where your grip is. If you can still hold on to the bar, you can try moving your grip in just a bit. Sometimes having a finger or two onto the smooth part may help a little bit. It does make it difficult sometimes to grip, but the straightest arm is, 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 is most optimal. So on the sumo pull, what we want is a straight line from our shoulder to the bar in our arms. If you're moving a little bit out, one, it's a little bit further range of motion. Two, it's sometimes a little bit harder to flex your back. And three, as you notice right here, is it starts to bump into your thigh a little bit early. So if you move it in, you can flex that back a little bit more, and you might be able to avoid uh, clashing in with that thigh. Because that's your lockout. Your hand ends up on the outside of your thigh, which isn't wrong, but it may be more optimal if you can squeeze it in a little bit. Sounds like we got a lot of tugging today, ladies and gentlemen. Again, be sure to like this video if you like this type of video. More coming. I'm trying to help you guys out. More vlogs. More gym footage, more goals, more talks. Appreciate everybody. Let's hop back in to the conventional pulls. Let's see what we got, my man. All these gyms look sick. I don't know where these gyms were uh, when I was growing up. I, I never had gyms this good. Oh, sets his back nice. Really solid, dude. Really solid. Uh, from the start, I thought you were going to be a little off just because you can see that curvature in their spine right there. But you really have good patience and good body control to really lock that thing in. Solid. What I'll try to do is perhaps just try to move that belt up a little bit in the front of your body. Try to have it a little bit straighter. Um, I wonder if we have a front angle on you. But right now, I'd say that looks really good. So your, your hips are a little bit high, which is fine. You have a little bit longer torso and not the longest arms in the world. Um, but what I would try to do is, one, move that belt up a little bit in the front. I think you'll be able to push into it and flatten that back out a little bit better. Two, right after you set your back, you're also going to try to do a little bit of a teeter-totter. Now, when I say hips back, I don't mean downwards. I don't mean pulling them towards the bar. I literally mean take the, the, the say we're totally uh, stiff from our hips to our shoulders, and you're just going to send that backwards. You're going to send it towards the wall behind you, sitting back, falling back. One, it's going to allow a little bit more tension into your uh, hamstrings and glutes. Two, it'll allow you to get in a little bit more optimal leverage where your shoulders are going to be just over the bar. And then three, hopefully because of that same leverage, you're going to do a little teeter-totter effect and your body weight is actually just going to counterbalance and have to pull some of that weight up. So you don't actually have to necessarily deadlift at all. Uh, you'll almost have it raising Ed Cohn, many other uh, top, top, top lifters in history have talked about that where they can literally just sit back out of tightness and leverage in a lift and almost hover. I think Ed uh, Cohn said he, he hovered about 500, 600 pounds just from his body weight sitting back in proper tension, let alone before he actually starts to flex his quads or flex his back and start to pull the weight. Um, but overall, my man, really, really, really clean. You have a little bit longer legs. Sometimes it's unfortunate. If you are mobile, uh, maybe give you know conventional another six months, but maybe give sumo a try for two or three months. See if you can kick those knees out, uh, and you might be able to get an even more optimal position sumo, although um, this conventional is really, really clean, my man. The Alico plates, everybody's got a nice gym. I'm moving to you guys. I don't know if you guys are taking in applications for a training partner, but hi, my name is uh, Salah Mike. Most people call me Mike Farr. I'm 30 years old. I've been training about 15 years, powerlifting about 10. 
Um, I like long walks on the beach. I dislike protein shakes. And I live my life 100 milligrams of caffeine at a time. Same man from the front angle. I did want to see this. We got the hook grip action. Um, stance and grip look really good. Uh, a, a little pro tip or the advanced tip. What I try to do is, yes, you want to uh, bend the bar around your shins, kind of thinking of a, a, a bodybuilding lat pull down like cable machine that's going to flex your lats. But the other thing you can try to do is you can try to really find torque in that shoulder where you're almost like you're benching. You know, we talk about bending the barbell. And what you'll do is you'll not only pull it around your shins towards you, right? But you'll cover your armpits by pointing those elbows backwards. It's it's easiest to do with straps or hook grip, and it's easiest to see. You can see his elbows are pointed outwards. That's telling me that he's not flexing his lats as hard as possible. Um, what we can do is, again, grabbing the bar as tight as you can, twist that arm, pinkies towards the back of you, again, to the back of the room on both sides. Your elbows should end up pointing backwards. Your shoulders will cover your armpits even more, and your lats will be that much tighter. The tighter we can get our lats, one, the stiffer we can be in our midsection from our hip to chin. Transfer of power into the ground, into our body will be better. If you're loose in the middle and you try to push, no matter how strong your legs are, it's going to be very difficult to pull that bar. It'll be very difficult to squat. It'll be very difficult to move any weight um, that's connected to your upper body or your hands because of that midsection looseness. And then two, obviously flexing uh, our lats will protect our spine a little bit more, but also allow you just to build bigger lats. And let's be honest, who doesn't want bigger lats? Everyone in the audience, please raise your hands. I see you up there, Timmy. Yep. Johnny, you too. Yep. Raise your hands if you want bigger lats. That's everybody. I'm glad we can all agree that we all want bigger lats. So flexing those lats a little bit harder, each deadlift, each set. And that's kind of a progression that will happen pretty much the rest of your training career. You're always trying to find new little nuances in your own form, nuances in your cues in your own head or whatever it is during your setup to get tighter and tighter and tighter. I don't know if anyone's ever found the, 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 the tightest that they can ever be. You're constantly tweaking things to get a little bit tighter, a little bit toider, a little bit toider like a toiga, if you know what I'm saying. The slow motion with the long breaks, dude, just epic. Imagine if we had some good music on these deadlifts, how much better it would be like this. Ho, 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 ho. Don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. Ho, 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 ho. Don't go, don't go. All right, on to the next one. Sorry for goofing so long, just a slow mo. You know how it goes. Uh, another conventional deadlifts, it looks like uh, these look like standard plates, which means that the barbell is a little bit thinner and the hole is a little bit smaller. That's what she said. Um, so sometimes the height on the deadlift, right? A deadlift is, is is set from a certain height. I don't know the exact inches, but it's from a, a Olympic barbell to a 45 pound plate uh, or a 20 kilo plate. Um, so this might be a little bit off. Uh, overall, my man looks really good. I try to not look at the side when you pull as always. We always want to keep that spine as neutral as we can. Any little nuance like that may cause some neck strain or traps uh, a, a tightness or a knot or something. We always just want to avoid that. Number two is you're squatting the weight up a little bit. You end up finding tension, but that's a reason why your hips shoot up so early. Early, and you have to lock it up just with your upper body and it, all the tensions on your uh, hamstrings. What we want to do is lock our knees and our hips out basically simultaneous on the conventional deadlift. So what we'll be able to do is you want to force those hips back but not down when you do it. Oh, we got some mega reps. We got some real weight too. What do we got? Near uh, 500? You look really efficient, dude. Um, back to my man on the conventional. Just get a little more tension in the hamstrings. Hips pushed back. Try to move knees and hips at the same time. My man right here on the sumo, um, it, it, it can be slightly different depending on how you build and how you pull. Sometimes the knees will lock out slightly sooner than the hips, as you can see with him often when I pull Yuri Belkin and some others on the sumo deadlift. Um, overall, man, I can't say much, to be honest. You're looking insanely efficient. Um, for you, it's probably just going to be about programming, keeping that back healthy, uh, and building up those quads over time. Dude, what's up with our sumo pullers today? They all seem so clean. This guy's really clean, too. Um, one little tweak you might be able to do here, my man, it, it, it seems counter, um, but if you move your stance in just a hair and then continue to force those knees out, you may be able to get a little bit more upright. What happens is everyone thinks a wider stance that you'll be able to get more upright and you'll shorten that range of motion. But if your arms aren't long and they're average to short, like me and may maybe the homie right here, uh, what will be able to happen when your arms, when your stance is too wide, you'll be too over the barbell. And what I'd like to see, and I think you can do it, is get those shoulders just a little bit more behind the barbell. But what that's going to take is your stance moving in about an inch. So keep your toe angle the same. Keep literally everything the same in your entire pull. But if you move your stance in about an inch, I think you'll be able to get a little bit more upright. You'll be able to flex your quads a little bit higher. 
And then, uh, and then I think in the long term, one, it'll take a little bit more stress off your low back. It'll be a little bit more optimal. Um, but I think, I think it'll be a little cleaner for you. Cause just even that last set, even though you're fatigued, you're just a little bit over the bar. Uh, but your, your sumo form is really, really good. So if you move that stance in knees out, everything else, the exact same, I think everything will be really, really clean, my man. Going into the slow-mo, you can see he does a really good job of flexing his lats, a really good job of tightening up that back, forcing those knees out, and getting his hips pretty close to the bar. Um, again, it's just my inclination, and that's with all these guys. It's just looking off one look, right? I'm looking off one look off an angle off one video. So um, take it with a, a grain of salt, as people say, but what I would do suggest is try my tips out for maybe two, three, four, maybe even five weeks. They may not fix everything right away you may not be able to hit a pr right away but what they're going to do is allow you long term to stay a little bit healthier handle a little bit more volume and perhaps lift weight long term these nothing in, in powerlifting is a quick fix oh so and so mitch switched my grip and i benched a 50 pound pr if that happens it's only because you're uh, more of a beginner once you get to late beginner intermediate or advanced it's going to be small tweaks and they're not always going to feel good and they will not always result in more weight on the bar right away but what they will help is efficiency long term which will allow you to stay healthy handle more volume and more weight overall again if you guys want to get involved that's ask mike m i k k e 2k's at gmail.com send in 3 reps 70% i appreciate all you guys so much be sure to subscribe give this thing a thumbs up i'll catch you in the new video Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm out.